Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm Dr. Christina Wells, and I'm the health ministry leader for the Lake Region Conference of Seven-Day Adventists. And I want to welcome you all today to our program entitled Your Best Defense. You are in for a treat today because we have a lot of information today to help you to be prepared to fight against the attacks to your immune system, and also to be prepared to share that with others. I bring you greetings from the Lake Region Conference of Seven-Day Adventists on behalf of our president, Garth Gabriel, the administrative team, our directors, our pastors, our staff, our teachers, and our members. We welcome you today. Today, we're gonna to be discussing your best viral defense, how to protect yourself against variants. This is also going to be a preview of, of our upcoming training that's going to start in February. So starting in February, we're gonna be having a training session every Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. for eight weeks, starting in February and running through March. And that training program is going to be based on health topics um, such as chronic disease management, mental health. We're going to be going over natural remedies. And the purpose of the training is to be, enable people to be able to use the information to help themselves, and then also to be able to share it with your family, your friends, and your community. So we're all gonna, also gonna be focusing on how to do community engagement. So you do not want to miss this training. We are, um, this training has been developed as a partnership with the health, re health ministry departments of uh, Lake Region and also of Allegheny East. And also it's going to be, um, we're also partnering with the adult ministries of Lake Region and Allegheny East Conference. So I wanna thank Pastor Bryant, Pastor Brathway and Leah Scott um, from Allegheny East who have been helpful in bringing this program to life. And we thank you for your support in that today. Again, I want to remind everyone that in the program description, there are gonna be two links. And one of the links is going to be a program evaluation. So if you could fill that out and let us know how this program has blessed you, if it was important to you, and also if you have any suggestions for upcoming programs. Also, want to let you know that there's a second link in the program description and that link is going to be to sign up for the training and it's going to be important that you sign up for the training because when you sign up that's how we're going to be able to actually give you the materials and the resources that are going to go with the training so signing up is going to be beneficial so again you can look for those links in the program descriptions on youtube and facebook um, and you can sign up and then please, please share this link with your family, your friends, and your community. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about our presenters for today. Our first presenter is Rico Hill. And Rico Hill is, if you guys haven't seen the presentations that he's done for us before, they've been excellent. And I know today we're in store for a wonderful presentation from both of our presenters today. Rico Hill, since Net 97 with Mark Finley, is where he gave his heart to Christ, and he has been busy since that time for the Lord. He left his lucrative secular career producing hit TV programs for Nickelodeon's Kids Network to helping to produce healthy people, amen, mentally, physically, and spiritually. As speaker secretary for the Beehive Ministry, Rico has authored three books, he, hosts a, he used to host a health outreach program on 3ABN called From Sickness to Health, and he travels the country as a health revivalist and evangelist. He is currently working as a producer at the Hope Channel and involved in a lot more evangelistic and um, community-engaged programs 
He currently resides in Westminster, uh, Maryland, where he where his family enjoys country living, and they set up a small farm as an outpost from which they minister to the surrounding cities. Our second uh, presenter for today is Dr. Monet Jadus, St. Juice, who grew up as a seven-day Adventist on the beautiful island of St. Lucia. Just as soon as he completed his schooling in Florida, God called Monet into the mission fields. The Lord began to lay on his heart the burden of proclaiming end time messages to the world through Bible studies, house to house evangelism, youth revivals, and medical missionary works. Monet is the husband of Kalina and the father of Gabriel. Monet works as a, a part of a bigger team at Eden Lifestyle Ministry in New York, and they engage in medical missionary workshops, seminars, house calls in America and internationally, and they currently operate a health and lifestyle center in New York. And I will say I attended a virtual training um, that Eden Lifestyle gave a few months ago, and that's why he's on the program today, because I was so blessed by what they shared. It was, it was awesome. And so I know that they have something for us today. So again, we welcome you this afternoon. We're gonna have a word of prayer and we will get into our presentation. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your loving kindness and your grace and mercy. We ask that your Holy Spirit would dwell among us and be with our presenters, be with our viewers, please be with our technology. Bless this presentation, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good afternoon, Rico, how are you? I am well by God's grace. How are you, dear sister? I'm wonderful, amen. And so we're, we're thankful that, again, that you're here with us today and I'm going to bring up your presentation and we thank you for what you're going to share. Fantastic. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I pray that uh, it is as beautiful where you are as it is where I am. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now visiting with family. And um, I set up the, the hotel room here as a little studio. So from which I am bringing you this presentation. It is a delight to be working with you once again, Dr. Wells. I appreciate the ministry that is taking place there um, in regards to health for the Lake Region Conference and uh, really appreciate the invitation to come and to share once again with your constituents. Uh, also, it's, it's uh, a blessing to be on the same platform uh, virtually with, uh, with Dr. Monet. Uh, I've known him for the last few years and we've had the pleasure of working with one another a few times. So it's good to see you, brother. And I know that uh, certainly the folks will be blessed by the ministry that you bring forward. Uh, I'd like to have another word of prayer as we get started, as we look to get healthy and prevent and be able to fight against the virus, the viruses that, and the variants that we're seeing constantly. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, just a brief prayer, recognizing Lord that nothing is possible without you. Lord, you say, without me, we can do nothing. I acknowledge that this afternoon and realize, Lord, that Lord, that nothing can take place without your Holy Spirit. The Bible declares, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So, Lord, I'm asking for your Holy Spirit, not only for me, but for those who are hearing, and those who are seeking to learn, and also seeking to acquire knowledge that they might use. Pray it also for my dear brother, Monet, as we bring these presentations together. We claim the promise that if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more shall our Heavenly Father give the gift of the Holy Spirit to them that ask? And we are asking in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to start out by just from the standpoint of this being training. And Dr. Wells, you'll let me know and make sure that you know, the technology is working with, with us and the slides are changing. Please let me know if they don't change when I reference something new. Appreciate that. 
So just in regard to this idea of training and why it's so important, especially now as we see all the things that are taking place in the world, I'd like to just start out with a statement from Councils on Health, page 506 from the Spirit of Prophecy. And it says, as religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience, and we're hearing a lot about that these days, aren't we? Those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to these four things, to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And then she goes on to say, and those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not what? The truth. Those who do not know the truth will be found in that category of those who are suffering and sick. So today, we want to be the people who have the truth, who can teach the truth, who can preach the truth. And more importantly, we want to be those people who live the truth and have it. Yes, we have the truth, but are we living the truth? And that's what we really want to understand, not only from the standpoint of just having information for ourselves, but also that which we can impart to others. So what I want to present to you this afternoon is what I started out thinking was a presentation as I was putting this together, creating a healthy lifestyle, creating a healthy lifestyle. But then as I began to think about it, some things occurred to me that we can't really create a healthy lifestyle. It's easier to just receive a healthy lifestyle. I'll explain, but just put that on pause and on hold for just a moment. I want to read to you what is promised to us. And the context will be that what you can receive is also promised to you. That which you need to receive right now that you don't need to go and try and create yourself is something that is already promised to you, available to us, and all we have to do is receive it. Notice what I'm going to read to you from the precious promises found in Deuteronomy chapter 28 as God talks about us, his people. Now, one more piece of information before I read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and beginning in verse 9. I want us to keep clear in our minds. We have a crisis in this world. It is global. It is something that's not going to go away necessarily. So therefore, we need to be doing the things that the people of God have been called to do so that we can not only live ourselves and fight against that which we are facing, but help others as well. So I want to keep that in the context of your mind or keep that in the forefront of your mind and then ask ourselves the question, how? How will we do it? Well, we see all manner of science out there. We hear all manner of things that's in the media. And we're really starting to come to that place. Can we trust anything with things changing constantly? So I want you to keep that in your mind because I want you to walk away from this presentation saying, now there is something I can trust. I can trust that. So let me read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 28 and beginning in verse 9. The Bible says, the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body. Now, there is a promise there that God is saying that he will make you plenteous. He will prosper you even in your health. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? It does, because in 3 John 2, the Bible says, 
Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. That's what John says, having spent time under the Holy Spirit, walking with Jesus, and then he makes that claim, that promise, and this desire of God. But it didn't start there. I'm showing you that the promise was made way back here and even further back here in the Old Testament. So we see here, he says, I will make I will make you plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers, thy fathers, to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Now notice the conclusion of the matter um, in terms of the promises of God in verse 13. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So listen, friends, the fruit of our body, the prosperity in health, the receiving of a healthy lifestyle is predicated on this simple promise and what we see at the conclusion that undergirds that promise. And that is this, that we would be obedient to what he has asked us to do. So we can talk about all manner of modalities, and we're going to talk about those. And they're wonderful. I love teaching them myself. And I know that Eden Valley is going to present a very powerful message and presentation on that. We can look to medicines and boosters and all types of vaccines. And I want to be very clear. I will not in any way get into the controversy of vaccine or no vaccine. Instead, if you know anything about Beehive Ministry and Rico Hill, I'm going to point us to Jesus because that's our only health, our only hope and our health. But so what we want to look at is this idea of receiving. If I told you to go create a million dollars, oh, no, make it better than that. Go create for yourself a billion dollars. It would be a daunting task. In fact, it would be impossible. It would be much easier if I just said to you, hey, you know what? I want you to receive a billion dollars. Would you accept it? Of course you would. And it would be very, very simple. God has given us something greater than that. He's given us something better than a billion dollars. He's given us everything as he gave us even his own son. So I like this image for my opening slide because you see two people traveling on a journey. Now, I liked it because I imagine that those who are listening are on a journey and they may not be on the same page. They might be different in terms of what they know. For example, I imagine that there are some on this call who know about the eight laws of health, can recite them backwards and forwards, know them under various acronyms, uh, New START, um, creation health, uh, God's plan. Uh, they even got one now called vaccines, right? But all of them point to the eight laws of health, which are brought about, we understand, as a denomination from the book Ministry of Healing, page 126 into 127, where is brought out sunshine, nutrition, fresh air, water, exercise, temperance, right? All of these things, good rest, all these things are pointed to as the things that have been established for us. I want to show you today that as we think about how we can fight the virus, how we can be uh, have a strong immune system going forward, because this is not going to stop, it's not going to stop, we need to look back to the old paths, as Jeremiah says, to look back to the old way to the things that God has already established, and all we need to do is receive them. We can't create them. They're already available to us, and for some reason, 
we have not taken full advantage and we need, listen to me very carefully, we need to be the people that are described here in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the ones who lead and don't follow, the ones who lend and don't borrow, the ones who are above only and are not and somewhere in the middle or certainly not at the bottom. We are the people who are to lead and we have everything that we need to lead the world in this charge. Let's go forward. Pestilence. This is a word in the Bible that's used many times. Some 28 or 30 times the word pestilence is used. Pestilence is twice. And when they're used those two times, Jesus is actually using them. Notice in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7, Jesus talking about the things that would come upon the earth in the last days. He says, and I'm picking up in somewhere in the middle of the verse, and famines, he talked about wars and rumors and wars, but he says, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, listen, friends, we ought to first and foremost stop looking for the pestilences to end. Yes, I said that. Jesus says that this will be an indication of the last days. Sometimes we don't like to hear that we're living in the last days. We want to somehow just be transported from coming from church up into glory. One day just walk out of the church and there it is. Jesus is coming in the clouds of glory and we don't have to go through any difficulties or trials or tribulation. But the Bible doesn't teach that, friends. The Bible tells us that there shall be pestilences. But listen carefully. God has given us something that helps us through the pestilence. We're, we're given another promise here in Psalm 91 and verse 3. Notice what it says. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. I know you must have looked at this at some point, somewhere around the end of 2019 into 2020, when we began to see our whole world turned upside down over coronavirus, COVID-19, and now all of its subsequent variants. But back then, you probably said, where was it that I saw that there was a promise from God that we would be able to fight? Well, it's here in Psalm 91 and verse 3. And it's so powerful in the way that it describes our ability to fight. It says his truth, this is verse four, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Do you know what a shield is? Well, Paul talks about the shield of faith there in Ephesians. But what about the buckler? Well, the buckler is very similar to a shield. Now, of course, a shield, when it says he will give you the shield of faith to help you to fight off the fiery darts of the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a defensive strategy and a defensive weapon. But what about a buckler? Now, the reason why, and we should always pay attention when the Bible mentions something, don't think the Bible's just repeating itself. It's actually repeating and it's enlarging. It's giving you more information so that you understand exactly what God is promising you. And so when he says a shield, that's your defense. But then it says a buckler. A buckler is a handheld shield, but it's smaller in size than a shield. But it also has something protruding out from it that you could use as an offensive weapon. So God is saying, I'm your defense and I'm your offense when you receive me. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Let's move on. Now, this point, just giving you some, some, some foundational things before I show you where we are and why we need to receive a healthy lifestyle. Not so much create one. Now, notice here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10, it tells us that in the last days there will be all manner of deception. It says, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not what? Receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, I want to just unpack this just a little bit. Consider with me that I am not trying to push on you. The truth, you know, oftentimes we say, well, if they would just accept the truth, if they would just embrace the truth, 
But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says before you can really help a man to understand truth, he has to have love for that truth. And see, the Bible teaches us in John chapter 14 and verse 6. I said John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus speaking, he says, I am the way, what? The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Bible is teaching that Jesus is the truth. But before he presents himself, he presents the evidence of his love. The love is what the Bible is saying you have to love, um, that you have to have to actually receive, not the truth itself, because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, you won't obey if you don't love. And when love awakens that love in you, then you embrace the truth. Does that make sense to you? So what we are really saying and what we really need to do is accept or receive that which has already been presented to us. Now, when I consider that people may be on two different journeys as the picture depicts, some who understand the laws of health and others who might be saying on this call or may see it at some later date, they may be saying, well, I don't really understand these principles of health. Never heard of them. We take it for granted, you know, as Seventh-day Adventists, that everybody understands the principles of health, but they don't. And that's why we have to come to this training and begin to understand it, not just as some scientific information, but as something that reflects and points to Jesus. In these last days, people need to have health and Jesus. You know, I considered something, just something parenthetical here. I considered something. I said, why is it that God's people are getting sick? Some of them even vaccinated. Some of them who are health reformers, some of them who are purists, and yet they're getting sick. And I thought about that thing. I said, wait a minute. They may be keeping all the principles of health. And by the way, keeping the laws of health, nutrition, exercise, sunshine, water, fresh air, rest, all those things are good. And we ought to do them with everything we got. But we live in a sinful world and it's no guarantee, hear me please, it is no guarantee that you won't get sick. But because you are being faithful in what you know, be faithful with what you have, and God does the rest. We'll talk some more about that in when we conclude. But the key is to not only, not only be uh, have faith, but you also must be obedient. The two go together. In other words, I'm finding that some, they have, they're doing all these things they're obedient to, but then they don't really have faith. And then there are some who just have a lot of faith, but then they're not obedient. But these two are almost like the, the justice and mercy that kissed each other. They must go together. They work together. God expects us to both be obedient and have faith in what he can accomplish for us. I think we call that righteousness by faith. You don't have it, but he'll give it to you. More about that in a few moments. But we want you to receive something. Receive what God has already provided for you. When God made Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, everything was already created for him. Here is the rub. Everything that he needed for health was there in that garden. His nutrition was there. The water was there. The fresh air was there. The sunshine. So what did Adam have to do? All he had to do was receive that which he already had available to him. So as we think about these principles of health and health in general, it's not something that you have to go and try to create for yourself. You just need to receive it. And as you walk on that journey, whether you're on one side where you know all this stuff and you've heard the science before, or you're on the other side, you're just hearing it for the first time. What? I didn't even know that there were laws of health. Well, there are laws of health. So whether you're on one side or the other, what you need right in the midst of you is Jesus. I hope you heard what I just said. See, what we are seeing in the world today is the vindication of God's character of love. That's what we're seeing. 
everything else is going to fall on its head. Everything else will be turned upside down because God, listen to me very carefully, throughout the entire Bible and even 44 times associated with pestilences in the book of Ezekiel, he says, and then they shall know that I am the Lord thy God. See, God has a problem. I said, God has a problem. Even among his own people, God has a problem. And that problem is we don't appreciate and accept and receive the fact that he's God. He's God. He made us. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, know ye not that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. So God who made us knows what to feed us. God who made us knows that we need sunshine. God who made us knows that we need pure water. God who made us knows when we need to go to bed. See, God who made us is the one who redeemed us. And now, in under the third angel's message, he's telling us, get back to the one who made you. The Bible says there in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of water. He points to the things. See, when when uh, Monet begins to break down the natural remedies, he's going to point to the simple natural things that came from the earth. Why? Because Jesus says, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth? Yes, you can trust in the things that man have made but it's a mistake. Yes, I want to acknowledge that there is a blessing in medicine. There's a blessing in the things that God has shown us as a people that we can do to heal people, to help people. But when we listen carefully, when we accept those things and are disobedient to what he's told us to do, then we have put ourselves in hot water. God wants us to be obedient first before there's a problem. Amen? So Adam, all he had to do was receive that which God had already provided. All he had to do was accept that God, he's the one who has done all these things and he just needs to receive it. That's what we need to do. Now watch what happens as we go through and we see this vindication. Now there's a percentage for you. Why do I have big 94% up on the screen? This is going to help us to understand what I'm saying. And I want to iterate, I want to reiterate, excuse me, I want to reiterate for our understanding this idea that God is right now vindicating what he has said. He takes, according to 1 Corinthians, he takes the foolish things of earth and he confounds the wise. So in other words, he takes something so simple and he confounds the wisest of the wise. In fact, it goes on to say, Paul says, that he takes the mighty things, or he takes the, the weak things, forgive me, the weak things of earth, and he confounds the strong or the mighty. He takes the base things of earth. He takes the cabbage and the collards and the kale. He takes the clay. He takes just water. In fact, Jesus himself, almighty God, became a man and became a base thing of the earth, a dig a disrespected and rejected thing of the earth, and yet he confounded the entire universe, choosing for himself as disciples, fishermen. God demonstrates that he's God by showing his power through weak things, quote unquote. That's why, that's why in the Bible it even tells us that God does not share his glory with another. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says, I'm the Lord, that is my name, and I will not share my glory with another. Friends, I'm telling you, if we want to beat this virus, if we want to stay on top of the variants that will keep coming and keep coming, mm -hmm. we have to first acknowledge that we're walking with Jesus and he knows the answers and we don't. So 94%. What is this number, 94%? Well, it came out in the news report. The AP says 94% of COVID-19 deaths among not fully vaccinated. Now, that came out in July, this year, July, back in the summer. But a year before that, just one year, down to, the, I think it was, mm, it was around August, July, August. This was, uh, this hit the news. 
Here it was ABC News picked it up. Coronavirus latest. Same percentage number. 94% of COVID deaths in U.S. had underlying conditions. Now, here what, here's what was interesting for me or to me. When this came out in 2020, not 2021, this came out in 2020, this only ran for two weeks. This, this story that 90% of COVID deaths in U.S. had underlying conditions. Now, that's pretty serious. And it was everywhere. If you go and check the news, you'll find it on YouTube. And they keep saying that number, 94%, 94%, 94%. But then they turn that into 94% of COVID deaths among unvaccinated. But what was the most important thing? The most important thing was it was people who basically either were on that journey. They didn't know about what was available through to them through Jesus with the principles of health, or they knew them and they didn't follow them. I'll say it to you again. The 94% of COVID deaths who had underlying conditions, or as they say in the scientific community, comorbidities. That means they had heart disease. They had diabetes. There was obesity. There was high blood pressure. There were these things that already were existing that for which they were taking medications and they were living a lifestyle devoid of an understanding or a appreciation of receiving which God that which God had already laid out, eating the right food, you understand, drinking plenty of water, getting out into the sunshine, getting proper rest. These were the things that God gave us. Do you not think that God knew? The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 46, 9 and 10, Isaiah chapter 46, 9 and 10, the Bible tells us, it says, remember the former things of old, for I am God. I am God and there is none else declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my good pleasure. What God gave us in the beginning, even to Adam, as he breathed into him the breath of life, God gave something that all Adam had to do was receive it because God gave it in love. In fact, if you go to that very famous text, John three sixteen, where the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. See, you must understand that when God gives something, he gives it out of love. Let me say that again. The Bible, it's a very common text, so you might miss it. There's a statement in the spirit of prophecy that sometimes people, faith is so simple that we look above it. We try hard to believe and we look above that which is so simple. But God wants to deal with us in simplicity. The gospel is simple. The the power of the health message is very, very simple. It's not complex. Even a child can understand it, right? So I want to make sure that we understand that when the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. So when God gives, he gives it from love. Or to say it the other, the other way, when God loves, he gives. So what he gave to Adam in the beginning, he gave out of love. And all we have to do is love it, or sorry, receive that love. So in this case, where people have underlying conditions, these are lifestyle issues. These are issues that come as a result of how we live, what we eat, when we rest or not rest. Do we get out into the sunshine? Do we exercise? Do we try to get those 10,000 steps in? What we're finding, no matter where you are, Jesus wants you to have, he wants you to be right where he wants you to be in terms of what he's already given you. And he'll walk with you and he'll teach you and he'll walk along with you as he walked with those, those disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he'll bring light into your understanding, even as he did for them. And I'm telling you, friends, what we need today is the light that comes from Jesus, the light that comes from God. In fact, we are told that what we know of his love, this is found in Mount of Blessings, page 18, paragraph one. It says, his love is the life and the light of God. It is the light and the life of God. This sounds so simple, friends, but it's profound. 
when you understand it, because it is the key to our health. Light that we may have understanding. Life, because that's what he promised us, promised us in Deuteronomy, that I will give the, you the fruit of your body. I will give you the fruit of all these things so that you will be the head and not the tail. We'll get into that some more. Let's keep going. So this was very recent. Article came out. The CDC warns in their internal document that war has changed with the coronavirus. Obviously, this is what the 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 the, the, the various um, variants that are coming out. Omicron not being the the least being the least of them. Uh, notice what it says here. This is from that internal document. Vaccinated individuals infected with Delta may be able to transmit the virus as easily as those unvaccinated. So this is right from the CDC. And I'm and I'm I want to I want to pause at this moment. I am not mentioning this to make anyone feel like I'm pushing in one way or the other. My position is simple. We need Jesus. Jesus and what he's already provided for us. That is the key. We must respect him as creator, as God, who has the answers to all of our problems, including the promises that he's given in Psalm 91 as I established. In fact, I want to show you that the Bible actually says that the problem that we're, the reason why we're sick, the reason why we're having problems is because we don't have Jesus. Let me show you. You'll find that in Jeremiah. Turn to Jeremiah. I haven't told you to turn anywhere just yet, but the Holy Spirit is in charge of this presentation. And he's just instructed me that I'm to turn and show you what, what is at the foundation of the problem. And Jeremiah raises an, a, a powerful question about why are we still sick? Why are we still here? They're connected. So you're turning to Jeremiah chapter 8 and in verse 20, and I'm going to look at 20 and then I'm going to look at 22. So Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 20 and then 22. Notice what the Bible says. It says, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Then verse 22, ask the question. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? So God, the Holy Spirit, speaking through Jeremiah, through his pen, he's raising the question, why are we still here? Why are we still sick? And the problem is, we have not turned to the balm in Gilead. Jesus is the balm in Gilead. Oh, you've heard the song. You've sung it many times. And we know from the spirit of prophecy that he is the great physician. So those who, those who are vaccinated are able to transmit the, the virus just as easily as the unvaccinated. Then it says vaccinated people with Delta have measurable viral loads. Similar to those, this is from the CDC's own uh, information, have similar viral loads uh, as those who are unvaccinated and infected with the variants. CDC, said, CDC, July 8, 2021, 99.5% of COVID-19 deaths are from unvaccinated individuals. So we find just like those two people walking down that road, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, vaccinated or not vaccinated, Really, we're having the same problem. We're on the same road together. You understand? See, in other words, what the media is doing, listen to me carefully. What the media is doing is going to divide us. You're the, you're the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated versus the vaccinated. In fact, right now in, in Australia, they have already, and this is not conspiracy. This is the news of the day that I'm telling you. They have a uh, an internment camp like we had here for the, the Japanese, an internment camp in Australia for the unvaccinated coming to a state near you. This is what's happening, but the Bible tells us that it's the devil who causes confusion. It is the devil who, <clears throat> excuse me, who actually causes division. A house divided against itself cannot stand. God, Jesus, does not divide us. He brings us together. So what is my message to you today? Number one, accept and receive what God already has for you. Number two, 
you must understand that we cannot win this battle divided, one against the other. We're in the same COVID-19 boat and on the same road. I hope that's understanding to you. But this is how the news is spinning it. Israel to offer third COVID booster shot to older citizens. That's July 29, 2021. They were the most vaccinated place in the world. But now a booster shot. I heard today a fourth booster. Israel to offer the third booster shot. The decision comes at a time of rising infections and signs and signs that the vaccine's efficacy dwindles over time. Do you see how we need Jesus? Do you see that? Reuters, most COVID-19 cases in Massachusetts outbreak among vaccinated. Now, that was back in July also, where these were vaccinated people, and I believe it was some 73% of those who were coming down with COVID-19 and the variant were among the vaccinated. I'm just emphasizing the point. We're all on this same path together. We need to receive the healthy lifestyle that God gives us. 79%. The CDC said that overall, 79% of the, the vaccinated individuals who were infected with COVID-19 also reported symptoms such as cough, headache, sore throat, and fever. Four had to be hospitalized, according to the CDC. Now, this is referencing back to this uh, Massachusetts outbreak back in July. So again, Back to that road. We're all on that road together. And the question for all of us is, is there no balm in Gilead? I'm so thankful that the I'm the, the prelude, if you will, to what uh, Monet is going to be sharing. He's got a balm. He's going to show you those natural remedies because they're going to be important, increasingly important. And you need to be trained in them so that you can have what you need. Because this, brothers and sisters, is not going to end. What we know that will happen alongside the variants, the pestilences, is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, and then shall the end come. We must continue to preach this gospel, variant or no variant, vaccine or no vaccine, booster shot or no booster shot. We are called to preach the gospel. That's Matthew 24. And verse 14. So Biden administration expected to advise COVID booster shots for most Americans. Now that was back in August. Well, it's here now. COVID-19 booster shot to be offered to Americans fully vaccinated with Pfizer and Moderna. Same road, same boat. We need Jesus. COVID booster shots are rolling out. What does that mean for you? Well, I think they're now pushing, as I mentioned, to the fourth one. COVID-19. Now here is the rub as I bring this to a conclusion. New study highlights potential role of diet. What? Yeah, there's a study. In fact, there are multiple studies. And New York Post picked it up. Medical News Today picked it up. Plant-based eaters are less likely to get severe COVID, study says. Now, look at this. Healthcare professionals eating a plant-based diet were 73% less likely to experience moderate to severe COVID-19. And those following a plant or fish-based diet were 59% less likely to get seriously ill. That study goes on to say that our results suggest, listen to this carefully, our results suggest that a healthy diet rich in nutrient-dense foods may be considered for protection against severe COVID-19. Now, where did this idea of a diet being important to man come from? It came from Genesis chapter one and verse 29. Before Adam was created, before God made a man, listen, before God made a man, God made a menu. Yep. Why? Because God knew in order for this body to function optimally, we had to follow a strict diet based on what he gave us. And I won't get into how that changed and so forth. We don't have time, but we'll get into it in the training and we'll begin to look at how was God leading through his love in the changing landscape of diet? We'll look at that. But this is important for us to understand that there's a study, uh, not a study, an article, San Francisco Chronicles just came out today, no, yesterday, yesterday, where there was a wedding. Listen to me carefully. There was a wedding in Wisconsin. You can look this up on YouTube, YouTube or Google it. There was a wedding in Wisconsin, 
everybody had a strict, they had a strict requirement for attending this wedding. Number one, you had to be vaccinated. Number two, you want to you want to do some social distancing. You want all the things that the CDC has recommended that we do. Many of them who went were healthcare professionals. Huge outbreak of COVID nineteen, Omicron. Why? Why is this? Because the people came there with the expectation, should they just follow the CDC guidelines, get the shot and all that. And again, I am not putting down the vaccine or the shot. You have a right to do what you want. People who don't want it have a right. What I'm pointing out is neither. I'm pointing to Jesus. I'm pointing to him as the balm in Gilead. I'm pointing to him as the great physician. I'm pointing us to the thing that he already provided for us and all we have to do, do is receive it as a loving act from a God who loves us so much that he gave sunshine, that he gave the best diet, that he gave fresh air. He gave all these things to us. You understand? So we see here that the best defense that we can have is to actually have a plant-based diet. Well, it says eat fish too, but notice Notice this, the efficacy of a plant-based diet for COVID-19. If you are vegan, 73%, 73% protection over the risk of a horrible outcome. But if you eat fish, it drops 14%. Why not let God get all the glory and follow what he says? Why take the risk at 59%, you know? Exercise. I'm just going to give you a couple of these and then we'll close. Exercise may strongly protect against poor COVID-19 outcomes. Let's break that down. A medicine that everyone should take. Compared with COVID-19 patients who consistently met exercise guidelines, those who were consistently inactive were at 2.26 times the risk of hospitalization, 1.73 times the risk of ICU admission, and 2.9 times the risk of death from their infection. So in other words, if you actually exercise according to the guidelines, you reduce your risk of a terrible COVID outcome. What about water, the use of water? Water is just is not just drinking. Monet will tell you that. It's not just drinking pure water, but the use of water through hydrotherapy or hydrothermal uh, therapy as a prevention and treatment of mild to moderate cases of COVID-19. What does it say? Well, I don't have to read you the science. All I have to do is go back to 1918, very briefly, 1918 with the Spanish flu. Who were the people who fared better while the, the, the army had hospitals set up and people were dying? Everywhere you look, people were dying. But with through the use of water, hydrotherapy, it says here about the Huntington School, the Huntington School, um, uh, which was a seminary school that was Adventist. It says every person showing indication of sickness was at once put to bed with a trained nurse taking temperature and watching for symptoms of the epidemic. If those symptoms developed, the patient was required to remain in bed. There's your rest. There were no drugs to be given. This is this from the, an article back in 1918. There were no drugs to be given, but with complete rest and quiet with went a carefully regulated diet, there's your nutrition, and fomentations applied to the throat, chest, and abdomen. This was hydrotherapy, the use of water. Is God getting the glory? Does he have his character vindicated when we are doing the things he gave us and told us to do? Well, you know what? Back then we were the head and we were not the tail. We were the ones that were above. When everybody else was dying, we were doing well. When we actually listened to what God had told us to do and we did it, only we only lost one person over four different institutions. Over four different institutions, we only had one person who died while there were millions dying around the world simply because we followed what God told us to do. Notice this. Here's sunshine. Dr. Anthony Fauci tells Matthew McConaughey, sunlight kills COVID-19. Gets candid in this Q&A. Notice what he said. 
New research shows that sunnier regions of the United States have lower COVID-19 deaths. I'm in Phoenix right now. Everyone's walking around like everything's normal. Suggesting that the sun's UV rays might somehow provide some protection against the disease. Notice what it says here. People in regions with the highest level of exposure to UVA rays, which make up 95% of the sun's UV light, were less likely to die of COVID-19. Is God the one who does the healing and gives us the protection? Absolutely, when we obey what he says. Respiratory health for better. This is fresh air. I'll just read you the, what I underline. Once an individual is infected, fresh air and cleaning the environment are recommended. This helps protect those who interact with a patient in home or healthcare settings. Does God get the glory in these simple things? Yes, just in simple sunlight. Fresh air is critical. Why it's important, this article, this University of Chicago, uh, uh, Dr. Wells, right there in your home area, why it's important to get a good night's sleep during the coronavirus outbreak. A ample sleep supports the immune system, which reduces the risk of infection and can improve outcomes for people fighting a virus. On the other hand, sleep deprivation weakens the body's defense system and makes people more vulnerable to contracting a virus. God wants to give us rest. Friends, I want to just close with a statement. I'm going to close with this statement because here's the thing. You may be saying, wow, this is so much to do. How am I going to change my diet? And how am I going to learn these things? And how am I going to drink enough water when I'm blocked? All these reasons that can prevent us. This statement is so powerful. It's from the spirit of prophecy. It's from selected messages. I follow this principle. And I pray that you will too. That you will learn these principles. That you will apply these principles. And that you will teach others. You know, he who teaches learns twice. Mm -hmm. He who teaches learns twice. So learn the things that, that I'm sharing and will share in this training that's coming up in, in the new year and what uh, Eden Lifestyle is sharing. And we can begin to apply them and use them. But notice where your help comes from. It comes from Jesus. Notice this. Closing. When it is in the heart to obey God, when efforts are put forth to this end, Jesus accepts this disposition and effort as man's best service, and he makes up for the deficiency with his own divine merit. In other words, friends, when your heart is set to obey God, to love him and to receive what he's already given you, when you make an effort, Jesus accepts what little you do as your best effort. And then with his perfect life, and his perfect life of obedience, he makes up for it with his own divine merit. May God bless you. May you prosper and be, may you prosper and be in health. May you receive the love that God has already given you. And I look forward to seeing you in January for the training. God bless. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rico. February for the training. Sorry, uh, February. February for the training. Um, thank you for, for your presentation. Um, I, there are a couple of things that I'd like to clarify. Um, one, I, I want to clarify that the Australia's quarantines are actually for travelers and it's not for unvaccinated people. So I just, I wanted to make sure that we clarify um, that statement. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that to give people a prelude to our training, our training is going to be focused on the eight laws of health. Um, we are, we're definitely not here to um, necessarily push one thing or the other in terms of vaccination. And our trainings are not going to focus on vaccinations. We're going to focus on the eight laws of health. Um, I definitely believe vaccinations are important, but our focus and our trainings are going to be how do we equip our bodies to be in their best shape so that they can withstand the pestilences that are going to come among us. And so I just, I just want to make it clear where we're going with our trainings, that they are going to be focused on the eight laws of health. And uh, we're not going to be focusing on vaccines versus not being vaccinated. And we're, we're probably not going to be talking about those things in future um, trainings as well.
Thank you again, Rico Hill. I just wanted to clarify that about Australia. Thank you for Quaylen for putting that in the chat so that we can have some clarity for that. And we will make sure that um, we will provide references for the um, the for the things that we're saying. I know someone asked about references as well. Um, I didn't know if you had anything else before we go on to Monet. Oh, you're Are on. You oh, go ahead. Are you, are you referring to me? Yes. Anything? I didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to add before we go on to Monet. No, that is that is all. Um, I, I, I did absolutely want to establish, and, and I hope it didn't come across that I was making a difference. I think I said it about 15 times that I am not in any way putting one against the other. So I think it, if you're going to emphasize, please emphasize also that it's brought together by what I said about Jesus. Right. That's right. Because Jesus <laughs> is the foundation. They really weren't paying attention. Right. Jesus is the foundation of it all. You are so correct. He is a foundation. And we can't even say that lightly, sister. It's the, it's the most serious thing that we have. Amen. He is the only thing that we have. Amen. So amen. 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 Thank you, Rico Hill. We're going to bring on Monet now. Good afternoon, Monet. How are you? You're, you're on mute. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm doing wonderful here. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to to share uh, this uh, this afternoon, and I pray that by God's grace that uh, that truly that you will be blessed as we get into our very important uh, talk for today. And I want to thank you so much again, uh, Dr. Wells, for the opportunity uh, the opportunity to share, the opportunity to uh, to be able to be here uh, with you all. I know that some of you are listening on Facebook or listening on uh, on, on YouTube. And uh, we just want to be able to be just so thankful for the opportunity to share and uh, the opportunity to be here with the uh, North, uh, the uh, Health Ministries uh, team, as well as we bring to you a very important presentation, which is a prelude as well uh, for what's to come. It's just a little taste, a little, uh, you know, appetizer by the grace of God. And I pray that you have your notepads in hand. You have your, you have your, uh, you, you know. So whatever you take a notes on, because we're going to be going into a few things here today. Now we don't have, we don't have time to cover uh, a multiple different aspects of of this topic. We're going to be summarizing it uh, in a in a snapshot. I know that some of us will have a tremendous amount of questions as well. You know, uh, I want to reserve a lot of that as well for the uh, for the training. So you, so you don't want to miss that as well. You want to tell people about the training that is coming up. Uh, because it's a training for you. It's a training to equip you, especially in the times in which we now live. For we know that we are living in very critical times. So with that in mind, let us pray together as we go to the great physician. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for all you have done and all you are doing thus far. Thank you, uh, Lord, for, uh, for our dear brother, uh, Rico Hill, as well. And I ask that you will continue to be with uh, Dr. Wells and the ministry and, uh, and also the, uh, the conference uh, out there at Lake Region. We pray for each person that have joined us here today. That truly, that even as we get into this topic, that uh, your name will be glorified and that uh, Jesus will be lifted up. We thank you so much in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So with that as well, as we get into our topic today, we're going to look at natural remedies uh, for common ailments, right? Natural remedies for common ailments. Now, with that in mind, I know that uh, Rodrigo started off with this, uh, with this quotation. Um, and I also have this quotation again at the beginning of my presentation. Uh, because I like to start off with this. It says that uh, as religious aggression uh, subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience, right, will be placed in what type of positions? Unfavorable positions for their own sake while they have opportunity. My friends, my friends, I want you to picture this for a moment because I want to picture this for a moment. Because there is opportunity right now. You do not want to miss the training starting in February, my friends. For your own sake, whilst we have opportunity, you must become intelligent now in what? Regard to disease, its causes, and what else? Prevention and cure. Disease, its causes, prevention and cure. And those who do this, notice very carefully, those who do this will find what? A field of labor, how many places? Anywhere. There will be how many? Suffering ones, plenty of them who need help, not only among those of our faith, but largely, but largely among those who know not the truth. I say praise God for that, uh, because my friends, uh, notice very carefully that God has given an opportunity to his people. If you think that this is the end of the crisis in which we are now living in, my friends, just prepare. Because the Bible says 
Jesus says in Matthew 24 that there will be pestilences. We should live with the expectation that these things will occur. And the reason being is that God wants to equip his church. God wants to equip his people. God wants his people to become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. My friends, because the things that we are seeing in our world begin to get worse and worse. And God wants you to be prepared. God wants you to be ready for what's to come. And my friends, you don't want to miss that training that the, the Lake Region Conference Health Ministry Department uh, is putting on because that is a training designed to equip you in such a critical time in which we now live. Now picture this for a moment. What should we know? Number one, we should know what? Disease. Number two, what else? It's causes. Number three, prevention. And what else? And number four, we have their cure, right? Disease is causes, prevention, and cure. Now, notice again in John chapter 9 and verse 1. You're gonna, we're going to look at the ministry of Jesus because I believe that Jesus is the greatest example that have ever walked this planet on how we are to be able to work with individuals or the sick mentally, physically, and spiritually. My my friends, Jesus did more healing than he did preaching. His ministry was a work of, uh, of coming close to people, making personal efforts to reach the needs of people mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now, there's a very important story here in John chapter 9 and verse 1. Notice very carefully here that Jesus used natural remedies to heal the sick. Now, Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now, I want you to picture this for a moment. You're going to be looking at this scripture in the lens of maybe medical text, right? So we're going to look at this as, uh, as, as medical text. Look at this here very carefully. Jesus passed by and he saw a man. Notice very carefully here that the physician, the great physician, he passed by and he noticed a man. Notice that this man, we, we're going to call him this way. We're going to call him a patient, right? right? The great physician was now in contact with a patient, which, had, which was diagnosed with a condition from his birth. And what was his diagnosis? This was that he was born blind. Let me ask you a question. Is that diagnosis, is that a terminal condition? Is that a reversible condition, right? Now, anybody, any one of us here will look at this today and say, oh, wow, how can this man's condition be reversed at all? How can his sickness be reversed at all? Because that looked very serious to me. Are you following me so far? Some of us may say, well, that is a very critical situation. And yes, it is very terminal. Notice here very carefully, as the, as the great physician came in contact with this man, notice what the Bible begins to reveal to us even more so as Jesus interacted with him. So what did Jesus do for this terminal condition? Notice in John chapter 9 and verse 6, the Bible lets us know this. And when he had thus spoken, he sat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. My friends, look at this here again. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now, I wanted to follow this story for a moment, for instance, because we have noticed as well, as you've probably read, as you read the Bible before, that uh, there was many instances of healing, right, where Jesus interacted with people. For example, the woman with the issue of blood. Remember, she touched the hem of his garment. And as a result of that, remember, virtue left Jesus and the woman was healed. Remember the, the centurion, right, and also his servant. He told Jesus, speak the word and my servant shall be healed. Remember that there were people, the man with leprosy. Remember that as well. Jesus touched him and, and also uh, he was healed as well. You notice that there, there were several cases of miraculous healing that took place. But in this instance of a man that had a very serious condition, notice very carefully that Jesus resorted to a, a modality that seems to be a little bit different from what he has done in times uh, before. Now look at this here very carefully. When he had the spoken, he what? He spat in the ground. He made clay of the spittle, and he did what? He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now, what is that that Jesus is doing there? Notice that he is using the natural things that is found from the earth. My friends, yes. The great physician, Jesus himself, resorted to the simple things from the earth that he has even created himself. Now, why did he do that? My friends, Jesus himself is leaving an example for his people in the last days. That's right. Jesus, Jesus basically said that there will be pestilence, there will be sickness, there will be disease in the last days. And also, he wants his people to be prepared for what's to come by even living them with a practical example. Now, when you go a little step further here with me, you're gonna, we're going to break this down for a moment. What natural formula did Jesus use for this blind man? 
Number one, he did what? He spat on the ground. Now, spit, basically, that is liquid, right? Now, spit, which is liquid, that is also warm liquid. I want to put that in perspective. Also, number two, he made clay of the spittle. In other words, he took that, uh, that spit, he mixed it with the clay. And what was the result there? Notice this very carefully. Then he made some sort of a, a mixture there, and then he anointed the eyes, or he smeared over the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now, let me ask you a very important question here today. What was the result of this, uh, of this interaction with this man that how, how, how Jesus chose the modality of healing that he had chosen today uh, and, and in, in, in times past to be able to heal and to be able to serve that man? Now, follow me here for instance here. You're going to see here. What Jesus did was he made what is called a clay poultice, right? He made what is called, that's right, a clay poultice. My friends, this is remarkable because Jesus himself used a natural remedy to be able to work with an individual. And notice very carefully that his condition was a very terminal condition. Are you seeing this? My friends. It's amazing how Jesus worked and helped this man with this very serious condition. So the question for us here today is, what was the result? What was the result of this interaction? My friends, it's amazing. It's amazing. Look at this, what the Bible says in John chapter 9 and verse 7. And said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam which is in, by interpretation sent, he went his way therefore and wash. And what was the result? He came seeing. My friends, that is amazing. It's amazing to see what Jesus have done for this man, the great physician. He used something so simple to confound to confound the wise. Are you following this? It's amazing what Jesus had done. And as a result of this, as this man obeyed his instructions and followed Jesus' direction by faith and believing that he is the only source of healing, he is the only one that can bring about restoration, and he is the great physician, notice the result. He came seeing. Oh, my friends, what an amazing thing. This man was healed. Yes, yes, he was healed. He was able to see again. And guess, just imagine the first person he was able to see, my friends. Oh, what an amazing experience that Jesus has left us an example to follow today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now look here very carefully. Did Jesus sanction now the use of simple and natural remedies today? Notice very carefully. Councils on Health, page 30, it says this. It says, in the Savior's manner of healing, there were lessons for his disciples. One On one occasion, he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and bade him go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, and washed. And what happened? He came seeing. John chapter 9 and verse 7. The cure could be wrought only by the power of of the great healer. My friends, let me read that one more time. One more time, my friends, because he is the only one. Are you following this? The cure could be wrought only by the power of the great healer. Yet Christ made use of the simple agencies of nature. So while he did not give countenance, right? To drug medication, he sanctioned the use, my friends, of simple and natural remedies. Oh, Jesus have resorted to his physician assistance. Are you following this? <laughs> right? He is the great physician. He is the one that brings about total restoration. And he should, and, and he, he doesn't want us to lose the focus and the mission that it is Jesus that is the center of our message and of the health message itself. And if you look at this a little bit further, you're going to notice something very remarkable. Do we then deny faith when we use natural remedies? Follow this very closely. If in praying for the sick, they refuse to use the simple remedies provided by God to alleviate pain and to aid nature in her work, 
lest it be a denial of faith. They are taking an unwise position. It is not a denial of faith. It is in strict harmony with the plans of God. My friends, to use the natural remedies that God has given to us, it's a demonstration of faith. Because we must believe by faith that it is only him that can bring about healing and restoration. But the Bible says faith without works is what? Is dead being alone. My friends, God has given to his people, his end time movement, his remnant people, a message for this time. So that we can be ready, we can be prepared for what is to come upon this earth, even as an overwhelming surprise. And God wants his people to be prepared practically, spiritually, mentally. Are you following this? So by faith, as we use these remedies, we are not denying faith, but we are showing, we are exercising our faith by believing and trusting in what God is able to do through those simple things. My friends, it's amazing. When you read the Bible a little bit further, what are some examples of simple remedies in the Bible? Right, You can find the use of herbs and kitchen remedies in Ezekiel 41, verse 12. The use of hydriatic procedures or hydrotherapy in 2 Kings chapter 5. Remember that? When Naaman went into the, uh, remember that? When Naaman went into the water, he dipped that what? Seven times, cold water, hot sun, cold water. Are you following this? It's amazing. Cleansing. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Juicing, 1 Timothy 5, verse 23, massage and essential oils, James 5, verse 14, ointments and poultices, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 7, Jeremiah 46, and verse 11. These are the things that God has given to us for these critical times. Amazing. So what is the basis of health then? In Exodus 15, verse 26, notice what it says here. If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, give all his statutes. Notice what the Bible says. I will put what? None of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that does what? That healeth thee. My friends, who is the one that brings about healing? Jesus, because we're going to be looking at some practical natural remedies here today. And I don't want us to miss the point that it's through him that brings about true healing and true restoration. Are you following this? And therefore, my friends, if you will obey, you will hearken, right? If you will follow his counsel, notice the promise here to us. The Bible lets us know that I will put what? I will put no disease upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians. Oh, my friends, Jesus gave us a remarkable, remarkable promise right here in his word. And these commandments, not only the Ten Commandments, but even that of the laws of health. Are you following this? So what is disease on, on the other hand? What is disease? Disease now is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from what? From a violation of the laws of health. That's correct. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. And I know that some of us probably know about the laws of health, right? We're going to be, uh, you know, uh, or we've heard about it for many, many years, right? But there are laws of health that God has given to us and disease and sickness is as a result, basically a violation of these laws. So, who it is to blame? Your doctor, right? Who is it to blame according to this definition? Oh, yes, my friends, it is us. Because it is us that disobey, that disregard, or that violate these principles that God has given to us and that God has established in the book of beginnings. That's right. You can find these principles or these laws of health in Genesis chapter 1 and also Genesis chapter 2. Amazing. Look at with me again. So what are laws of health? Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph 2 says this. It says, pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, big word to say temperance, right? Rest, exercise, proper diet, the use now of water internally or even externally, Trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. That's right. Notice what it says here again. Beautiful book, Ministry of Healing. If you haven't read that book, I want to encourage you, my friends, to go back on your shelf. You know, dust it out, okay? Dust it out. I want you to read that book. 
your life will be changed. Your life will be transformed. It is almost like you're reading a modern day medical report. Are you following this? It's so powerful for what's happening in our world even right now, my friends. You will be ready and prepared for what's to come. Read this book, The Ministry of Healing. Notice what it continues to say on, on page 127, paragraph two. It says this, every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to apply them. Every single person should have a knowledge and that's why you don't want to miss the training that has been held especially for you because you need to understand the knowledge, you need to have the knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and exactly how to apply these agencies, my friends. It is very critical for you to know this because now is the time of opportunity. You wanna invite your friends, invite your church members, invite the invite people to come, are you following this? Invite them to come on to the training, sign up, my friends, because we're gonna be learning very critical things. Now follow me here very carefully. We're gonna look at four steps now to fighting top killer diseases. To fighting four, four steps to fighting top killer diseases. Step number one, step number one, the cause should be what? Ascertained. In other words, you should find out what is causing the condition. Find out what has caused your sickness, right? Now, if you're with me, if you're with me here, for example, for example, let's say diabetes, for instance. What is causing my diabetic condition? Uh, could it be the way that I'm eating or maybe my lack of exercise, maybe not enough uh, sleep, right? What is causing my condition? Are you following this? We must ascertain the cause. Find out what is causing this. Go back to the root of the problem. Go back to the foundation of the issue. Are you following this, my friends? It is very important as you go through the steps of of healing and restoration, it's critical for you to understand what has caused my or your condition. Are you following this? I want you to write this down now. Write this down. Step number two. Write this down. Step number two. Unhelpful conditions should be changed. That's right. If you want to be able to overcome sickness, overcome disease, and that's exactly what we're going to be teaching, right? We're going to be teaching this in the, uh, in the training. You don't want to miss this. Un unhealthy conditions, right, should be changed. In other words, there are certain factors or condi conditions that, that has even brought about sickness and disease in, in probably your life. Are you following this? And you have to change those, right? I know that sometimes we, you know, we like to go around the elephant in the room, but it's right there. The problem is right there. It could be, it could be, uh, it could be work. Are you following this? Yes, we got to be realistic. You know, we got to be realistic with our lives if we truly want to overcome. Think about it for a moment. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, but you're expecting a different result, my friends, that is insanity. For, for you to be able to experience true change that is found in Jesus, are you following this? The conditions must be changed. And notice what uh, Brother Rico said before, right? I'm going to quote the Bible, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, say of the Lord. You can't do this. In your own strength, impossible. So you need Jesus, my friends, to help you to do that. Ask him to remove the scales in your eyes so that you can see very clearly exactly what is causing the conditions that we are living in or that you are living in today that have brought about your sickness or your disease. Step number three, write this down. Wrong habits corrected. Wrong habits, that's right. Wrong habits corrected. So what are some of those habits that need to be corrected? For example, uh, maybe, maybe for example, let's say diabetes, right? You, you may need to, uh, maybe you live in a very sedentary uh, lifestyle. You're not moving much. Therefore, we must be able to, to move, must be able to exercise, right? Maybe we go to bed late at night, right? For example, you go to bed at 12 o'clock, right? One o'clock in the morning. Uh, are you following? Anybody, can anybody here can testify, right? One o'clock in the morning, two o'clock. We want to change those habits by the grace of God. And it's only through him living in us that we can experience that change. So in other words, my friend, the same way that some of us pray, we say, Lord, help me to help me to, to be good today. Help me, Lord. Father, help me today that I can exercise. Are you following this? Oh, Lord Jesus, help me today so that I can drink some water. My friends, we need him as never before to be able to live out his way in me in us so that we can, by the grace of God, show forth uh, this, this example of living his principles in our lives. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Look here again. Step number four. Then nature is to be assisted. Then after following steps number one, two, three, now it's time to put into effect step number four. Then nature is to be assisted now. We are to do what? Assist nature. What nature? Our bodies, right? Assist our bodies in her efforts, right? In her effort to do two things. Notice what nature is trying to do. It's trying to expel impurities, reduce its toxicity, reduce the to toxic load in the system. And, and number two, to reestablish now the right condition in the system. My friends, nature is always trying to bring about healing and restoration. That's how God had designed the human body to react right to to changes are you following this now we are to not work against the body are you following this we are not to work against the body but we are to work with the body to assist the body in what the body is already trying to do that's right what the body is already trying to do we are to assist it but the problem now is most of us don't know how to assist the body and that's why we have this training we want to show you how to Assist the body in her efforts. And my friends, I know that we have a little crash uh, workshop here today, a little crash course, I want to put it that way, right? But we're going to be going into these in detail extensively throughout our training. And you don't want to miss that at all, right? Now, when it comes to coronavirus now, there are many, uh, there are different things that different modalities that we can use when it comes to uh, COVID-19. Because now to assist nature, it is to use nature's remedies. Are you following this? To assist nature is to use nature's remedies, right? Natural remedies. Natural remedies. We're going to be using them today, right? We're going to be looking at a few examples. Now, these examples are for even for educational purposes, right? It's very important to keep in mind. Lifestyle remedies, some lifestyle remedies when it comes to fighting COVID-19 is number one, drink lots of fluids, right? Also, uh, sunshine exposure, right? Sunshine exposure, get in rest, staying active, trusting God, and even plant-based nutrition. I know that Brother Rico talked about this before, right? Talked about the, uh, the plant-based nutrition and also the science that is coming out today, right, on the effects of this uh this nutritional plan that God has even given to his remnant church. My, my friends, that is amazing. Look here with me again. For instance, we're going to look at this. Some herbs and vitamins that can actually help with, uh, with this condition, uh, such, as, uh, you know, such as this virus. Are you following this? So now, one of the things is uh, elderberry syrup. Elderberry syrup. Now, now elderberry is uh, re reputed by some to be effective in treating, uh, to treating the common cold, flu, and even that of constipation. Follow me very carefully. Right, even hay fever and even sinus infections. A 2019 study on elderberry for both cold and flu suggested that the fruit substantially reduced, substantially reduced upper airway symptoms. Now, even another study now reposted those who use it uh, had 50% fewer sick days, right, resulting from a cold or from those who actually didn't. However, a 2012 study suggested, 2012 study suggested that elderberry could help prevent influenza infection by stimulating an immune response. That is right. It is called what? Elderberry. So you know what? When I, when I first heard about this virus, I know it was some sort of immune issue, right? Contagious. You know what I said it to do? Get some elderberry and drink the, uh, get the elderberry syrup and start taking elderberry syrup down. That's what I did, right? And to be able to help me throughout the time. And especially when I was used to go around groups or large groups of people or even even with people at all, just to be able to take that to be able to create or even to simulate or stimulate an immune response now, i know some of us may know about this is ready but we we we, ha we are not trying these things right now look here with me uh vitamin c vitamin c here as well also known as ascorbic acid or even ascorbate uh it, it is a vitamin found in various foods and also sold as, as a dietary supplement now vitamin c is one of the biggest 
immune boosters of all, right? And in fact, that a lack of vitamin C can even now, can even make you more prone even to getting sick. Vitamin C supports the body's immune system by protecting the integrity of the cells and affecting the production and the function of white blood cells. That's right. Vitamin C. We're going to be looking at some of this. Now, where can you find vitamin C? You can find this from what? Citruses. You can find this from lemons, limes, grapefruits, right? There's lots of citruses. Even that of kiwis and other fruits, you can find vitamin C in that as well. So vitamin C is very, very critical when it comes to your immune system. Now, also vitamin D now, vitamin D. Now, the immune system defends now, it fends the body from foreign and even invading organisms. Now, why are we talking about the immune system? system so much because your immune system is your defense mechanism, right? It is your defense mechanism against this uh, this virus and even its variants. My friend, variants will continue to rise up. So the biggest defense that is a constant in all of this variants is your immune system. But we have to be able to care for our immune system, to boost our immune system, to ask God to help our immune system. Are you following this? And not only natural remedies and so forth that can actually, there's so many things, the lifestyle remedies through the laws of health and the eight laws of health and so forth. These laws of health can also impact your immune system as well, right? That is amazing. It can also impact your immune system as well. Now, the, uh, the, the, the implications of vitamin D deficiency on the immune system have been clearer in recent years and in context of vitamin D deficiency, there appears now, there appears to be an increased susceptibility to infection and even other disorders as a result. My friends, vitamin D is critical. So if you are able to expose yourself to sunlight, right, and it's good to be able to do that, right, follow me. Also, you if you are not yet uh, if you don't know your vitamin D levels, then you want to get that checked. You want to know where you are. You want to know uh, you, what's your current state? What's your current position? Are you following this? Now, vitamin D has been has been used to treat what is called infections, such as tuberculosis before the advent of even antibiotics. Tuberculosis patients were sent to sanatoriums where treatment included exposure to sunlight, which was thought to directly kill that of tuberculosis, right? You can find many, many studies on that as well. You can look at a lot of the tuberculosis centers that they had back in the days as well. Sun therapy, solarium therapy, vitamin D was a very important aspect of, that, of, of, of those therapeutics. Now, what about cleansing? Cleansing the system is very, very important, especially that of the colon and even other uh, parts of the limitory systems of the body. It's very important to, to detoxify, right? To reduce the toxic load in our system. That is very critical. And sadly, as we're going through all of these things, many of us are not even well equipped to be able to use these things. And that's why we have the training, my friends, because we want to be able to share that information, the knowledge with, with us so that we can be able to understand how to use these things intelligently in its pro proper context, the proper use of these, of these things so that we can get the results that Jesus wants us to experience. Now, we know that subsequently as well, up to about 70% of a person's immune system resides in the wall of the colon. Right? The immune organ is uh, intimately tied to that type of bacteria within the colon itself. And that's why we must, especially if somebody has COVID-19, you have to be able to decongest. You have to be able to detoxify the colon. It's very critical as well when it comes to fighting COVID-19 effectively. effectively. Now, also reducing a fever. How do you do that? Because some of the symptoms associated with COVID-19 or this virus, my friends, if that is that all a fever. So, so, uh, so what can actually help assist a fever, right? What can actually help potentially help to assist a fever? That of, uh, uh, that of what is called an onion rub. So let's go here with me. If you can put uh, our, our video here, we, I should, we should have a video here, uh, onion rub. If you can assist me to put that one in the screen, that'd be awesome. So that maybe we can have a demonstration to show you exactly uh, how this is done. Okay, beautiful. About an onion rub? Well, actually, my sister had a very high fever um, several years ago, and guess what happened? Um, in applying the simple remedy under her foot, rubbing it underneath her feet, and so forth, 
In a matter of a few minutes, her fever went from very high to normal. So today I'm going to be sharing with you that simple remedy on how you can lower fevers with an onion rub. Yes, an onion rub. I know that sounds like a little bit uh, funny to some of, the, some of us, but it is actually very effective. So it's very simple for you to do this onion rub. This is how you do it. Very simple. You want to get one onion, right? And all you need to do is just cut the onion in half. I'm gonna cut the onion in half. Now, as you can see, I have two half. I have a half each of the, the onion, and then you want to rub underneath your feet. So you put, you get one of your feet un underneath it. You want to rub. And then you get the other foot, and then you want to rub again for about a minute to five minutes or so. You just want to make sure it's rubbed very, very effectively underneath the foot, and then you want to get like a sock. Then you want to put the sock on your foot, put the sock over the onion and lay down, right? Lay down this way and leave it there for about a few hours. Uh, typically, you can leave it overnight if you do that overnight or you can leave it for about maybe two to even six hours um, as well. Now, if you still have a fever, what you want to do is to repeat that remedy again the next day or the next couple hours until you, until you get the desired results that you see. Now, although it may look very simple, like using an onion, but this is actually very effective to you. So if you're experiencing any fevers, especially at this time, or you know anyone that's experiencing a fever um, it, at, at this moment, then simply you can use an onion rub. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that by God's grace that that uh, that you see how to use a simple onion rub. My friends, we have so many stories about this as well. I remember uh, one time um, a, a gentleman texted me and said, Money, I have a, I have a very high fever. What, what can be done? What can be done for this very high fever? So guess what? I told him, listen, try this out. Uh, you have anybody to assist you in the house? You know, get an onion and Put it, cut it in half and rub it underneath your feet and so forth. And I'm telling you, my friends, in the next two hours, I got a text back and it said that, uh, that the fever broke and that it was coming down. I say praise God for that, for what he has done through these remedies, my friends. And keep this in mind, whenever we apply any natural remedy, we have to seek God. We have to seek Jesus, my friends, because he is the great physician. He is the one that brings about this healing and restoration that we so desire. But onion have been effective for when we have actually used them and to see the benefits of the onions as well. Uh, underneath the food so far, we tried it so many times to break fevers and to lower uh, fevers as well as a result from, from various issues. Okay. Now also the uh, immune boost drink as well. We're not going to have a, a lot of time to go into this one here today. So we're going to skip this one. Let's go to the super antiviral tonic, the super antiviral tonic here as well. Now with this viral tonic, it has what is called turmeric, right? Ginger, uh, golden seal, horseradish, garlic, onions, lemon, cayenne pepper, honey, peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil, tea tree oil, right water and so forth all of these ingredients are are blended together it, it's uh with with hot water and uh and also we see here to let it draw we can let it draw for about 40 minutes and take about two to four tablespoons every 30 minutes while symptoms continue so if anyone uh especially with this virus uh, uh viral infection and so forth by being able to take this super antiviral tonic my my friends we have seen powerful results as a result of these things right right now, also, the anti, the aloe vera super booster, the aloe vera super booster as well. You're going to notice this as well. This one is also antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial as well. Uh, it's a fresh aloe juice, right? And notice these things are very potent as well because these are, these are uh, individuals or people, uh, you know, these are people and individuals who are experiencing what is called COVID-19, right? Or, or this virus, right? And being able to, being able to use these simple things as well. Uh, there, there has been relief for a lot of individuals as well. Now, with this too, you can see that uh, this, this fresh aloe vera juice is mixed with about uh, some vitamin C with lemon juice and garlic cloves and turmeric and an orange juice as well. All of this is uh, is mixed together, right? All this mixed together, blended together and, and drunk once daily, right? Drunk once daily. That is excellent to be able to boost the immune system, create an immune response, and also to be able to assist the body in its efforts, in its efforts to fight, 
in his efforts to be able to come back to a state of balance, to be able to, uh, you know, to be in a state where it's can, it can effectively fight these, uh, fight this uh, uh, deadly, deadly virus. Look at here again. Also, drinking citrus, drink the citrus blast here as well. Now, this, this is a, a, a potent vitamin C drink as well. Six ounces of uh, grapefruit juice, uh, four ounces of cranberry juice, four ounces of orange juice, two lemons, right? And one tablespoon of molasses, right? This, this makes about, uh, this makes about um, two cups of uh, juice. And this is very, very high in vitamin C. And this is very potent as well. So this must be drunken with care, right? So in other words, this actually helps to be able to boost the immune system uh, effectively as well by using this uh, using these very simple juices. Also as well, hot and cold. Hot and cold showers can actually help tremendously, especially for people who are experiencing like early symptoms or people who are experiencing late symptoms as well. If you, if you have the strength to, to do this as well, keep in mind that this can be done. We have also seen how effective hot and cold showers are to be able to stimulate an immune response by actually increasing the uh, white blood cells and even red blood cells in the system and also helping the body to fight uh, effectively as well. So how, how can this be done? Okay. Hot water, as hot as the person is able to tolerate. The person that is getting under the hot water, not, not the person that's Assisting them if, you, if there is an assistance that is needed for an individual, right? So that's where uh, three minutes of, of hot, three minutes of hot, as hot as that can be tolerated, and then 30 seconds of cold. Rotate this about three times, right? And that will be able to truly boost the immune system, boost the immune system as well. Also, remedies for other lifestyle conditions, right? For other lifestyle conditions. Now, I know that. You know, time is against us even now, and uh, we don't have time to get into a lot of these specifics here, but there's so much that, that I could be able to share with you here today, right? We know that we dealt with this, this virus, its variants, and so forth by using this immune boost drink and, and vitamin C and so forth like that, but there are also other lifestyle conditions which we can use natural remedies for. I'm just going to go over maybe one or two of them, and I'm going to be uh, handing it off so we can close it for today because I know that time is well spent. Battling anemia, right? Battling anemia, right? With certain conditions. And, and we have seen many individuals who are going through this issue as well. And one of the things that, I can, that, that can actually help and assist is that of, uh, is that of blackstrap molasses. Using one tablespoon of blackstrap molasses twice daily. Uh, we know that by, uh, by blackstrap molasses, it may not be the best tasting thing, right? Some of us may say, oh, uh, uh, I don't like this taste, right? But we actually see it actually helps individuals remarkably. Blackstrap molasses contains vital vitamins and minerals such as iron, calcium, magnesium, vitamin B6, and even that of selenium. So yes, we have seen individuals who've taken the blackstrap molasses. You can that that can be taken. What I will do, I'll take that in directly, or I can I will mix that in with some water, some warm water, and drink this drink down. And that can do this until somebody somebody asks, well, how long do I do this for? Well, basically, that can be done until the desired results are seen. But be mindful as well if anybody may have uh, anemia or maybe have some other issues such as uh, diabetes and so forth where sugar can be impacted, this may not be the best option for that, right? Maybe another option for somebody that, that may be diabetic is that of, uh, you know, dark leafy vegetables, you know, consuming that, whole foods, consuming that, and also, also plant chlorophyll by even the liquid, the drink, right? It's like a juice chlorophyll to be able to fill the body up, flood the body with lots of iron and so forth, calcium, magnesium, and stuff like that, right? You want to be able to, that, that can be taken in as well, or even that of lentils. Lentils, yes, eating lentils uh, every day for about 30 days can also impact uh, somebody's iron levels and so forth, right? So there are many things that can be done that, that, that can be done to be able to impact the human body in such a remarkable way, right? Now, also, let's look at one more here today, one more here today. Um, another drink here for anemia, right? This is the iron drink tonic, right? Uh, iron drink tonic. And we can see here with me very carefully that uh, one gallon uh, of grape juice, you know, figs, raisins, apricots. This is very potent, very powerful here. And uh, let that sit as well. And that can be, somebody can actually drink this as well. That can impact the iron levels. And even as a result, may benefit those with, uh, with anemia as well. My friends, there are so many things. Look at this. So many things that I want to share with you here today, but we don't have time to get into all these remedies. But I want you to come out to the training because 
because we're going to be, guess what? We're going to be diving into the, we're going to be going deep into those natural remedies as well, okay? Into those natural remedies as well. So you do not want to miss that. Now, keep this in mind. Prevention is better than cure. That's right. <laughs> Prevention is better than cure, my friend. So it's better to prevent an oncoming bus from hitting me by getting out of the way than by allowing it to hit me. And then I have to go through the whole process. And maybe I might not even survive. Are you following this? That's just common sense. Are you seeing this? Prevention is better than cure. My friends, I want you today, by the grace of God, to follow the principles that have been shared with you here today. Not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. And health is not by chance. It is not called, boom, I'm healthy. Oh, because I just think it, I'm healthy. Are you following this? My friends, health is by choice. Not just physically, mentally as well. And spiritually, my friends, it's by the choices that we make every single day. Keep this in mind. We reap what we sow. That's right. We reap what, So if you sow bad habits, you're going to reap the fruits of that. If you sow good habits, you're going to reap the fruits of that as well. And by the grace of God, we're going to be showing you how to sow good habits habits through the laws of health as we go throughout the training starting in february 2022 you don't want to miss it's going to be amazing it's going to be we're going to be sharing with so many stories and testimonies of people right that have been healed as a result of so of god's powerful methods of healing so what is god's desire for you and for me as we wind down today third john 2 beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as Thy soul prospereth. Put your name in that word, beloved. Put your name there. I'm going to put my name there. More name. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. My friends, Jesus wants you to prosper today. Jesus wants you to prosper today and be in health. Amen. Praise the Lord. He wants you to prosper and be in health today. Jesus cares about you so much. He calls you beloved. He wants you to be, be well. And Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth, right, to record this day against you. I have set before you life. What else? Death. Blessings. What else? Cursings. Disease. What else? Health. But notice what Jesus, notice what the Bible encourages us to do. Choose life. Choose health. Choose blessings. Why? Why should you choose it? Why? Because you and your children may live. Oh, my friends, Jesus wants you to live today. How many today say, you know what, Lord? You know, these presentations really touch my heart. You know what? It's, it's time for me to make a change in my life. I've been hearing about this for so long. You know, Dr. Wells, I've been preaching this all over the place. You know, we've been trying by the grace of God. You know, I, I've tried to fail. Maybe I have a resolution for it. You know, I'm going to make a change. January 1st, when January 1st comes, I'm going to be exercising. Okay, okay, okay. Some of us say, you know what, Lord? I want to make a change in my life. Jesus says today to choose life. And he is able to live out his way in us, in me, in you, to exercise, to get proper rest. Are you following this? To eat right, right? <laughs> to be able to take care of ourselves and our families. My friends, Jesus wants you to choose life today. Jesus wants you to choose health today. To be more like him mentally, physically, and spiritually, to even choose good thoughts. Sometimes it's not what we're eating that is killing us, but how we are thinking. Are you, are you following me? That is critical. Jesus wants you to be whole today. How many of us say, you know what, Lord? I surrender. You know, I surrender. I want to choose life. You know, I put my hands up, both hands up, because you know what, Lord? It's me for it. I want to choose Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for each person here today, for being with your sons and daughters all across. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will give us your 
your power. Give us your strength. Fill us with your spirit even now. Oh, Jesus, help us to live to please you daily. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will be with this training that is coming up. Be with each person that will be in attendance. Be with the planning. Be with uh, Dr. Wells as well and the entire team and the conference, oh Father, that your people can be equipped for these last moments. Father, help us to be like Jesus day by day. Help us here. Some of us may be sick and ill. We need your help. We need your guidance. Give us your strength to live to please you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Monet, I want to, I want to ask you a few questions before we go here. Um, thank you for the excellent presentation. I, I thank you and Rico Hill today for all the information that you guys brought to us. Um, you mentioned something and I also want you to go back to one of your slides, but not yet. But one of the first things you mentioned that I just wanted to take a couple of minutes, to, a couple of questions about some of the things you, you mentioned. Um, you talked about uh, anemia, and I will say that as a physician, um, I deal with a lot of, especially women who deal with anemia, um, and it's something I also have myself. And so I attended you guys' training that Eden Lifestyle did a few uh, months ago, and I want to tell everyone it was great, which is why, again, um, I've invited them to come and give us this training. But the person who presented the um, blackstrap molasses, their suggestion was actually to put it in soy milk and to warm it up. And I will tell you that I do it that way and it tastes absolutely great. And I <laughs> absolutely. It, yes, and I recommend it for my patients. So I know that it's a wonderful, wonderful way because a lot of time patients can't um, tolerate the, the ferrous sulfate. Yeah. That's just to That's them right. because it's very irritating to the stomach. And so um, they want something else that they can do. And so the black strap molasses is something that I've done. But I recommend it in milk, in soy milk, soy yes. milk, some other plant milk, some other plant milk, um, and warm it up. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. It's a wonderful drink to have <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> um, so thank yeah. you again for that. Um, I just wanted you to go back to your slide on headaches. Can you just, because yeah. that's something headache. that people, I know deal oh, with headaches. So can you, you just tell us a you minute about headaches? What? Yes. You saw that in passing, <laughs> right? Let's, let's go back to it. Yeah. Let's go back to that one real yeah, it's, quick. It's a serious a issue. About headaches. Yeah, it's a serious issue now. There, there are some very simple remedies for headaches here as well. Let me, let me go back there. Um, let me go back here to headaches. Now, another thing, too, that, that can be done for headaches, too, as well, apart from this one, too, is, um, of course, you have to go back to the roots of the headache. Right? What, what is causing your headache? Why do you have the headache? And once you understand that as well, what well, a simple thing that we have done is to drink a cup of water every 10 minutes for one hour. A cup of water every 10 minutes for one hour can actually help to relieve a headache. Now, we work with people with the most severe, I mean, migraines, okay? Very, very deadly. And we have seen how impactful these simple things are. Now, this is a simple remedy for headache care as well in conjunction to the water that you must drink. Of course, you want to drink water. Uh, you want to be able to, if you are in a state where you're, you're under stress, you want to do some deep breathing exercises. You want to calm your, your nervous system as well. You want to really calm your system down, right? Very critical. Also, what can be done to overcome headaches is, uh, you know, three drops of peppermint oil. Put that in a half cup of water with an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now, the cayenne pepper that we will typically use for medicinal purposes are what is called the, uh, you know, the medicinal grape cayenne, which is more like the 90,000 hit units and above. These are things that, that, that you can get at, you know, health food places and so forth. And, uh, it, you know, sometimes if you have nothing else, we do use the, you know, the typical one that you probably have in your, on your shelf right now. Um, but we see an effect, an, an impact when you use the, uh, the 90,000 heat unit cayenne pepper. It has a dramatic impact on the system as well to be able to increase the circulation, right? So you can reduce the congestion in the head and, and increase that circulation throughout the entire system. That is very, very critical as well, right? And that's why you want to drink water too. You want to increase circulation, decongest the mind. Also, the brain especially, okay? So you do that. You want to mix this thoroughly as well. And also, you can drink that down and, and uh, also re repeat until relief 
uh, is seen as well. Now, whenever whenever it's kind as well, putting kind directly on the stomach, you don't want to do this back to back because you might find yourself in a place where you can get lightheaded, you get dizzy and so forth. So if if even an eighth of a teaspoon may be, may be too much for you, then you want to dilute that. You want to add maybe more water to that combination. Okay, you want to sip on it first. Sip it first before you actually use it, right? You want to use common sense, you want to use wisdom when applying these things because everybody will tolerate this differently. Right. That's very critical. And we have seen that to help to relieve headaches and even severe headaches as well. Uh, it's an amazing remedy. And I can't wait to share so many more on our training as well. That's Wells. Right, right, right. It's uh it's yeah. it's wonderful. And I thank you again for yeah. that. I also, you know, um one other thing I've tried, and you can tell me if, if you found any success yeah. with this that I've heard before, is putting a cold pack on your head and then putting your feet in water as in warm water. as you can possibly stand mm -hmm. because it will cause a vas it cause constriction of the blood vessels in your brain with the, with the cold pack and it'll dilate the vessels in your leg and it'll divert that blood flow from your head, which also can help to relieve headaches as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That that is effective. And we have seen that as well. We worked with, with one man uh, in, uh, you know, he had a he had, he had severe migraine. So what we did was we put a cold pack on his head, uh, warm water, as warm as he can tolerate on his feet area as well. Uh, cover his body with uh, with uh, like a cotton or like wool blanket to really increase that circulation even more so. We did that for about 45 minutes. Man, this man had a very terrible migraine to a point where they thought that he would actually die, right? We were able to put him there, did therapy with him, uh, you know, at his home, um, 45 minutes. Then after that, we, we put him in a cold sh shower for 30 minutes. <gasps> It increased hyperventilation, increased the circulation of the system, right? And as a result of this, guess what? Uh, he came back out of the shower almost half dead. Be before that, he went in like he's about, this, this man looked like he's about to drop. When he came out of the shower, he's like, wow, I feel great. I feel great in the head. And the migraine was almost completely gone at that point in time. So that's amazing with these natural therapies. And that's where, uh, by the grace of God, we're going to be showing uh, some of those things as well in our training. Right. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to, before we go, we're going to go here in a second here. I know someone asked about the training. So the training, basically, it again will start the first Saturday in February. It will go for straight for eight weeks. Um, please sign up on the link because if you sign up on the link, any resources that we give out during the training will be emailed to you. The training will consist of some foundational information and also some natural remedies. So we'll be going through um, chronic diseases, mental health, eight laws of health, um, and also be talking about natural remedies for those things as well. And so you don't want to miss this training. We're also going to be talking about community engagement, because we want to make sure that you can not only use these things for yourself, but that you can share it with those around you. Because we want, we know that the health message is the entering wedge. We know that blending it with the gospel is the way in which it's going to be most impactful. So we want to be able to use this as a part of our evangelism efforts as we minister to people day by day by day. So I just want to thank Monet again. Thank Rico Hill for joining us this afternoon. I want to thank everyone who has joined us. And please, please don't forget to fill out the training registration as well as the um, program evaluation so that we can understand what, how best to make these programs relevant and um, significant for your particular needs. Thank you again for uh, being with us this afternoon. I'm going to ask Monet again if you could just pray us out. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for all those that have joined us here today again. And thank you for the program that has been held by the Lake Region Conference, oh Lord, to be an impact to uh, well, for many individuals. We want to thank you so much for the opportunity you have given to us to learn of these things. Thank you for the leadership of Dr. Wells as well, and also for all that has been done uh, within this uh, conference and region uh, to be able to impact souls for eternity. Father, most of it all, we want to be like Jesus day by day. We want to reflect your character fully in our lives. I want to thank you so much for today. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.